Morning, everybody. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, and welcome to today's webinar on assessing speaking online. This is the second um, in a series of how many, Victoria? Four, five? Um, four, four or five webinars mm -hmm. on assessment literacy. So I hope you all came to the to the general, the introduction to um, to assessment. Um, last week, we still have writing and reading and listening to come. Uh, my name is George Heritage. Um, I work in the assessment services department in the Madrid office. And this... Hello, uh, my name is Victoria and I work with George in the assessment services department in the Madrid office. Right, so let's get started. What are we talking about, Victoria? We are going to talk about assessing speaking online. Ooh, tricky, tricky. Yeah. Yeah, I, think speaking, I don't know, at first speaking probably seems like one of the most difficult things to deal with effectively online. Hmm. Lots of um, issues, we're all aware that you all have lots of issues and as do we, but I think we're all adapting very well to the new climate. So hmm. uh, let's have a think about how we can manage this. What are we going to be talking about, Victoria? First, we're going to discuss some ideas about our context and also some issues around assessing speaking in general and then we will try to compare and and see similarities and differences between assessing speaking online and face to face then we will focus on assessing speaking online how we can do it the tasks that we can use and finally we will finish with resources and support material available and as I said, we'll be sending you all a document at the end with lots of useful links to things we talk about today and lots of other cool stuff available from Cambridge. <clears throat> so please wait for that. So to start off, um, just to get an idea of how all of you are doing, um, how confident do you feel assessing speaking online? Um, there should be a poll on the right hand side. <clears throat> so very confident, confident, not confident or don't know. So if you could answer that poll now. Oh, we're getting pretty good results. 50 over 50% 50 confident. Wow, so, wow, we can finish now. <laughs> That's it, bye bye. Okay, well done everyone. <laughs> okay, well that is encouraging. I think a lot of us have had time now to adapt to this new situation. Um, so that is encouraging. If you have any ideas or if you strongly disagree with anything we say, just let us know, okay? Um, and just to get an idea so we can kind of slightly tailor what we're talking about, uh, which platforms are you using for your classes at the moment? Uh, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet or Google Classroom or anything Googly, Skype or other, if it's other, Please specify in the chat box if you can. Yeah, this is more or less what we expected. A lot of you using Zoom. We've heard some very good things about Zoom. I think the breakout rooms, do you think Victoria is one of mm -hmm. the best? Yeah, they are, the they are great, tool. very useful. Okay, so we've got over 50% on Zoom, Google. And we are aware that each platform does have its advantages and its disadvantages. We'll be looking at a couple of them, so by no means the only ones to look at. We didn't want today to flood you with lots of different resources and different platforms. So we'll try and make today relevant for as many of you as possible and think about how to do things depending on which platform it is that you're using. Mm -hmm. God, we've got a lot, lots of other ones. Okay, lovely. So issues around assessing speaking, Victoria. Yep. Um... Why is speaking a difficult skill to assess? Now thinking in general. Yeah, so in general, back in the classroom before and online, mm -hmm. what makes speaking a difficult skill to assess, do you think? As we said, in your normal situation and online, why, why, is, why is speaking difficult compared to something like writing or listening? What makes speaking difficult to assess? Yes, I'm out. Lots of students. Hmm. Nerves. Nerves. Okay. Confidence. Confidence. Mm -hmm. Subjectivity. Definitely, mm -hmm. we're going to hopefully help you with subjectivity. Yeah. Shyness. It takes too much time as well. 
stress, lack of feedback, immediacy. Excellent. The teachers know all the answers, Victoria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Which is encouraging. <laughs> Grammar, too shy, fear of speaking, accents, it's live. Yes. Mm. No time to think, just have very big groups. So yeah, I think some of these some of these difficulties have perhaps been made easier or can be dealt with more easily now that we're online. What did we come up with, Victoria? Yeah, uh, it is true that speaking is fast. It is easily lost and difficult to hold on to analyze. There are also many aspects to consider and to assess. And it is also assessed. Sorry, George. No, 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 no. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Sorry, it is, it is assessed over uh, a block of performance, so not sentence by sentence. Not necessarily, depending on the on mm. the the purpose the of the purpose. assessment mm. and what we're what we're um, what we're focusing on. We'll be looking at things today from an exam point of view, but also thinking about different ways and different different purposes of um of of assessing speaking in class mm. um so practical problems what practical problems do you face when assessing speaking we've mentioned a few of them before mm. what makes things difficult from a practical side again in the normal classroom and online Time, mm -hmm. standards, the huge classes, definitely. Yeah. Subjectivity. Mm -hmm. How to record and then listen to them all. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Large classes, grouping, different approaches to grouping. Internet connection. Lack of time. Yeah, lots of issues. We had group size, obviously. I mean, in a classroom with 30, 30 students, it's quite difficult to you know keep an eye or keep an ear on mm. everyone at once. Again, the lack of, lack of time. I mean, even what A2 key, how long does A2 key take, Victoria? Is it around 10 minutes? Yeah, around 10 minutes, even 10 minutes, and that's dealing with two students. Yeah. Expertise and support. Um, I don't know how many of you are lucky enough to have conversation assistants in your normal classes. I don't know whether you still have those conversation assistants um, in your online context. Um, having the support just to deal with big, big groups is often a problem. Hmm. And a lack of clarity on, on what, what criteria to use. A lot of people have said it's subjective, doing things fairly. We'll be looking hmm. at that in more detail today. I think if we have a very clear set of criteria, that our students are familiar with and that we use consistently and fairly, then it can make make assessing speaking, as with other skills like writing, a lot easier and more useful for the students if they're, if they're all being measured against the same yardstick and they're very clear about the areas that they need to improve and the descriptors that you're using to mark them. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it can it can make things make things easier. So We've been thinking a little bit about assessing speaking online and dealing with speaking in mm -hmm. the classroom. Um, what are the different the traditional ways of speaking, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have one-to-one -one paired interviews with the with the teacher. Um, we also have questions and answer tasks. Um, and in this case, of course, maybe a, a limitation could be the limited range of functions to, to assess. Yeah, I mean, again, um, it depends that there's a place for mm -hmm. it, I think. Depends what, yeah. you're, what you're assessing. If you're assessing specific Definitely. language, specific mm -hmm. vocab, narrative tenses, etc., then uh, a question and answer format can work very well. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, rehearse talks and, and dialogues that students need to prepare. In this case, it's not in spontaneous speaking. That's quite a traditional way, or a mixture of that. I remember mm -hmm. from my from my French, my French and Spanish A levels, we had to prepare a little bit, and then it moved on into a discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the online situation can make um, can make 
can make this a little easier hmm. if we're using recording software or videos, etc. Definitely. And the last one it looks very complicated, Victoria. Did you write that? <laughs> <laughs> Subjective impressionistic assessment based on experience. What do we well, mean by that? A lot. <laughs> I think this is um, um, the, the the type of assessment that you that you do in, in your class um, and throughout the the academic year, throughout the term, and that gives you an idea of of how your students are doing in terms of speaking. You can give a mark at the end of the of the term, but it's based on, on your experience throughout the, the year. And perhaps more okay. formative assessment, mm, less yeah. formal formative assessment, yeah. or more formal but not very visible formative assessment. Mm. It does need organization and it does need you know strict record keeping yep. uh, from from you as teachers. Mm -hmm. um, right, so are these traditional ways still applicable when assessing online, Victoria? What do you think? Some of them, I think, might even be slightly easier Easy. online. Mm -hmm. yep. um, some of them, perhaps not. Listening to around 250 students will be difficult. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> I agree, Monica. <laughs> I agree. Let me see what's Helena saying. It's students recording the voice of a text and sending to the teacher. Then they can all listen to each other. That is really nice. We are going to be mm -hmm. talking about about approaches to peer assessment, which I think um, I think trying to install peer assessment and making it a routine, regular thing um, can help you hmm. as a teacher in terms of workload, definitely. But it helps them as well because it helps definitely. them be much more aware of of their strengths, their weaknesses, and to build on and learn from from their students. Hmm. So if we go back to those one-to-one -to -one hmm. paired interviews, Victoria, I think depending on depending on the platform. Depending on the platform, but yeah, if you're using um, Zoom, for example, and breakup rooms, I think it's uh, it's easy to, yeah. to replicate that. Mm -hmm. Or easier to replicate that. Easier. It is nevertheless very time consuming and there's no, hmm. there's no avoiding that really. But as we said, if we try and inst in instill some more peer assessment, then hopefully that can help mitigate that. Mm -hmm. Question and answer tasks. Uh, what do you think, Victoria? Again, yeah, if it's maybe one to one, it's very time on. consuming. Hmm. If it's teacher to the class, yes, but then how are you keeping an eye on, on so many students at once? Yeah. The third option? Um, I think, well, we've talked about this, that there are some um, some platforms, some resources that, that make it easier to, to do this type of, of assessment. Uh, if we ask our students to, sh uh, to send videos um, of them or short recordings of them talking, this could be Easy, you, easier to it, do. It's easier logistically. It's easier time-wise. Yeah. Again, yeah, time. You, know, you are going to have thirty videos to watch. Um, yeah. Trying to trying to integrate those more into the class as far as possible, or doing it in group work. Um, and again, the impressionistic assessment. It depends. I think it's <clears throat> in some ways, whilst it can be difficult, keeping an eye or an ear on everyone in a class of thirty students. Uh, online if your record keeping is there and now we are more, all getting a lot more used to to, to working online hmm. and perhaps keeping keeping it depends how many speaking opportunities you 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 can yeah. give your students um so we are doing our best today to give you some advice but it's we none of nothing we say is going to work in every situation no. mm -hmm. for every platform yeah uh, but we'd like <clears throat> at least to reflect on things as far as mm -hmm. so <clears throat> victoria how is assessing speaking face to face different <laughs> from online any ideas um i think that in general we we need to be aware of of our context and and the situation and we need to adapt to to these assessing speaking online so it can be done uh, it is a bit different. We just need to be aware of it. We are going to talk about this in, in a bit more detail. Yeah, we, we've been doing a little bit of research mm -hmm. uh, with some teachers, but generally we had to think about it. I think instructions and setup is definitely different 
Um, yeah. A lot more thought, I think, needs to go into this. There are lots of different ways that you can do this. It depends, again, on your platform. You can send out instructions using something like Flipgrid. Mm. The speakers of teachers have been using Flipgrid to structure their whole class. It does, obviously, bring in um, a, a much more delayed and stilted approach to doing things. Mm. Um, we've all said connection problems, other technical aspects. So if we're using streaming or a live platform, then it's it's unavoidable unfortunately yeah. mm. i think perhaps using recordings and videos might get around that problem mm. time victoria yeah uh we need to be aware of the fact that there's going to be more maybe wait time or you need to just um set uh, some more time uh, allow for some more time um between students so that uh, you have uh, enough time to explain everything and that you don't keep your other students waiting so and just be aware of it like connection rules and even trying to replicate yeah. something that we would do normally hmm. it's always going to be the sending them the instructions or sending them the input giving them the wait time before they yeah so that has to be factored in Mm -hmm. Repetition. What do you mean by that, Victoria? Yeah. Um, sometimes we we when we are asking for repetition, or when we when our students are asking for repetition, we understand that there is there may be a problem of comprehension. But in this case, uh, maybe it's not a problem of of comprehension comprehension as a language related but it's just a, a, a consequence of technical problems yeah. so we need to be be aware of that and maybe um um reach an agreement with other colleagues so that you are taking it into account in the same way interaction we've had mixed feedback on interaction mm. a lot of teachers saying that you know i mean obviously that the natural face-to-face -face interaction is lost but using something like breakout rooms, you can contain interaction perhaps more effectively than you could in a mad class full of 30, 12 year olds. Um, and we can, we can control and replicate the interaction patterns perhaps more successfully using, using technology and using some platforms. Hmm. Um, student experience, Victoria? Yeah, um, we were also maybe a bit surprised uh, when we when we saw the results because um, some or most teachers think uh, seem to think that it is more positive that students feel more comfortable, um, especially if maybe the assessment takes place in the in the normal classroom and they they fear that they are they are um, they feel uncomfortable because their classmates may be listening to them and they are. Um, afraid of making mistakes and in this situation um, because they feel that it's more private they they feel more comfortable yep and lastly feedback <clears throat> instant feedback is not going to be as easy but i think a lot of the the, the platforms and the resources that mm. we're using can allow for different means and different types of feedback we'll look at feedback right at the end of today um, and have a think about how we can deal with that. Um, but for now, let somebody just mention this. William, I think, William Henderson just said, any useful rubric? Exactly. <clears throat> when assessing anything, we have to know what it is that we're, that we're looking at. What are we trying to elicit from the students? And what, what criteria, what rubrics are we using to then assess that? So mm -hmm. what aspects should we consider when assessing speaking. In the chat box, please. What aspects or what criteria should we consider when assessing speaking? Ideas in the chat box. Interaction, lovely Lisa. Yeah, fluency. fluency accents, okay. Fluency, level. Content. Content. Very nice. Grammar. Grammar and Lexis. Discourse management. Well done. Whoever won on discourse management. <laughs> um, comprehensibility. Yep. From a Cambridge point of view, all of our speaking tests are they're designed very much with communicative language learning in mind. So comprehensibility and are they communicating what what is it, what what they need to communicate? 
Um, all of these are important, but I think we have to bear all of them in mind because, you know, we all have those students who are wonderful communicators, have great interaction. They will never put an S on the third person singular, <laughs> but we know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you have to have to decide what, what the focus is. Eye contact. Yeah, I mean, a lot of body language and eye contact we are we are missing out on. Uh, which I think can disadvantage, especially lower level students. I think we, a lot of communication can still be achieved. Use like I'm doing now, <laughs> <laughs> using body language and using eye contact, which we are we are going to miss out on um, in the current situation. Mm. Lovely. What do we have, Victoria? Yeah, we had, uh, I think our participants covered everything. So vocab, yep. uh, grammar, interaction, pronunciation, discourse management, and then the global impression, the global achievement. Lovely. So we're going to be looking at a few of these criteria in more detail today and show you how you can make these more accessible to your students um, as far as possible. So um, we'll start off with this. <laughs> this is the... Cambridge English qualifications speaking criteria. We're not going to go into this because it's a lot of text. Um, but as you can see on the left hand side, we have grammar and vocab, mm -hmm. um, then discourse management, pronunciation, and interactive communication. They are the criteria we use for nearly all of our exams. You will notice that there's one hole at the bottom. What is discourse management about, Victoria? Well, it's about um, communicating um, ideas complex, simple, depending on, on the level, and also um, hesitating, um, producing or, speech that is connected. Organizing what we're organizing. saying, mm -hmm. making sure we're saying it's cohesive, coherent. We do not assess this at A1 or A2, simply because in those situations, the students don't pr really produce enough language to effectively introduce that as a criteria. Mm. But our, our main criteria are grammar and vocab, discourse management from B1 upwards, which we'll look at, pronunciation and interactive communication. Um, our, our qualifications, as you know, the speaking tests are, um, are done in pairs. So you have one um, interlocutor running the exam, an assessor behind, and then two candidates, because we feel that that creates as level or as natural uh, a situation as possible in a speaking exam. But if we have two people at the same level, mm -hmm. um, it, it works very nicely, especially for the interaction. Yeah. And again, pronunciation, if you look more carefully, we'll give you this in the handout. Pronunciation, we do not expect even our C2 students to speak like the Queen. Um, once we get up to C1, well, even B2, but C1 and above, intonation, um, stress, etc., becomes more important. But are they are they intelligible? Do we understand mm. what they're saying? Okay. Right. So as I said, this is your handout. We're not going to look at this in much more detail. <clears throat> right. On to the meat of it, Victoria. Assessing speaking online. How are we going to start? We are going to uh, mention that it can be done informally and more formally, as we've seen. As in the classroom, mm -hmm. I mean, how much of your, I mean, as teachers, you are assessing all the time, as we know, and the formative, the impression, the impressionistic assessment we we're talking about is an ongoing thing, and it's probably quite informal. Online, this can be done informally or more formally. Mm -hmm. Some of you are probably approaching an end of term situation, so things need to be done more formally, which needs different setup. Um, Informally speaking, it's probably better to focus on one aspect at a time. Mm. Um, as we said earlier, the question and answer format has its place if you're practicing specific chunks of language, narrative tenses. But if we're doing things informally and in very large groups, it's probably easier for you to focus on one aspect at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and the big one, Victoria, which we... Yeah keep saying <laughs> we need to use uh, we need to use the scriptures um, to assess and um, rather than intuition okay i think it's going to be uh, easier and it's going to be much more objective if we if we stick to our descriptors lovely so how do we use descriptors what is the big document that we like to use for 
Yeah, uh, we base our descriptors and the common European framework and can do statements. Lovely. So if you have time, David might be able to send you the link. He's a big fan of this document. It is an enormous <laughs> document. Um, <laughs> But that was created by the Council of Europe in conjunction with Cambridge and the Goethe Institute and University of Salamanca and other language institutes. Um, and it has a series of can-do statements at each level, uh, yeah. describing as clearly as possible what students at A2, at B1, at C1 are expected to be able to do at those levels. So we have three on the screen now, A, B and C, and they each come from A2, B1, or B2. So if we have time, very quickly, which do you think, which level do you think each one comes from? So in the chat box, you do A, A2, A, B1, A, B2. We might not have time for this. Hmm. Such an enormous number of attendees. A, oh, B2, Lola, very quick, B1. very wow. quick. B2, B1, A2. A to B, lovely. A to B. Mm -hmm. A lot of ideas. So somebody just asked something about validity and reliability. I think making sure that the um, that the that the input and the structure of the test is the same for all candidates and at the at the at one side of things and using the same criteria can help ensure that validity and reliability okay we're going to give you the answers um a can interact with a degree of fluency and spontaneity that makes regular interaction with native speakers quite possible without strain for either party is a b2 i'm mm. not going to read the others uh you can see where they are we'll give you a couple more because we'll be looking at these as we go through the following activities this one's probably slightly easier isn't it mm. simple connected text and that's probably an A2, the one at the top, Victoria. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Am I going to embarrass you? <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Simple terms. Oh, nearly. So a B1, B2, and an A2. Um, we'll give you the handouts now. Now, Victoria, or in a second? Mm. In a second, in a yeah. second. Yeah, maybe. So yeah. using these can do statements and making students aware of them, um, and you can use them as sort of checklists across the period of a year, show them the can do statements, what you will be able to do at the end of this year is a really nice way of structuring any any course, any curriculum, and it gives them something to aim for. Um, so once we have a clear set of descriptors to use to mm -hmm. assess, um, what is the last important stage or the next important stage, Victoria? Yeah, we need to plan or design activities that will elicit a sufficient sample of, of language to assess. Exactly. And this, what we were saying about reliability and validity, if we are eliciting the same amount or the same a similar size sample of language from each student, then we are doing things as fairly and consistently as possible. But we need enough language to assess what we need to assess and obviously the higher the level we probably need a larger sample of language so how do we do this in our exams victoria we're going to start off with a part one okay so we're going to look at these two can do statements part one is very similar in all of our qualifications from a2 up to c2 obviously with different degrees of difficulty but what's the for what's the general format victoria yeah, part one is usually question and answer. It's like an interview uh, with general topics uh, which are um, more or less familiar depending on the level and which gives uh, the opportunity to candidates uh, to relax. Yeah, to relax, uh, relax as far as possible in a speaking yeah. test, sort of break break into to speaking within mm. this context. Um, so we're going to look at we're going to go backwards. We're going to be looking at A2, B1, and B2, but we're going to go in reverse just to keep things interesting. Um, so we'll have a look. Here is a selection of questions that examiners can ask in the part one for B2 first for schools. Um, so divide it into people you know, things you like, places you go to. And this is a lovely way to, um, it's a lovely way to 
to start a lesson, to mm -hmm. finish a lesson. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice, nice warmer activity. Um, how can we look at doing this online, Victoria? Well, firstly, uh, which, which first, criteria should we look at? Which criteria should we look at for this? Yeah, uh, we, we thought that it could be a, a nice way to start assessing grammar and vocabulary. So um, in this case, this is the, the criteria for B2. Um, that goes from one to, to five. I'm just going to turn my video off quickly so you can read the top. Um, <laughs> all of our criteria are designed into five bands, okay? Um, so three, three bands with descriptors, as you can see, one, three, and five. And a B2, a three is B2, mm -hmm. okay? A four is a strong B2, and five is going up into C1. All of our speaking and writing criteria overlap like this because we know that no one level is an island in itself. So a, a band five at B2 is a band three at C1. A band one at B2 is a band three. Is that the right way around, Victoria? Yeah, a band three. I'm confused now, but yes, oh, I think confusing. so. <laughs> this, is, this, this is the published criteria. You can get all of this in the teacher's handbooks. Mm -hmm. um, it's very useful. And I think, as I said, making students aware of this is a really nice way to help them structure their progression. But yeah. it's written for speaking examiners. As you can see, I think B2 students should more or less be able to understand this. But a really nice way to make it more relevant, Victoria? Yeah, is to um, adapt um, the, the language so that students can fully understand them and use them for peer assessment or for self-assessment so that they can reflect on the, on the marking criteria and know how to improve their strengths, their weaknesses, and, and see how they can and get so we. We have, I've just given you access to the handout, so we've got it for B2, B1, and A2. We've only rewritten one of the criteria for you, but mm -hmm. you have a nice worksheet that you can try rewriting the rest of them, I and mean, you can give this to your students. So we were thinking, especially in a, in a breakout room context, for example, Victoria, mm -hmm. um, you can give, put them into groups of four. If you're gonna be practicing exams in pairs or speaking practice in pairs, mm -hmm. put them in groups of four. Each of them has one of these, and whilst they're listening to the other partner, they can use this simple checklist. Has your partner used simple grammar? Have they used some more difficult grammar, conditionals, perfect tenses? They can write some examples, take yes, take no, and it gets them involved in the assessment. Hmm. Um, so here's a nice example for B2. Um, what about the task itself, Victoria? How could we deal with this tidily online? Yeah, um, there is a, a great resource available on WordWall. And uh, well, there are a lot of, of resources that you can use, but here we are going to pay attention to um, the wheel, okay, that you can use um, to get, well, here we can see all the all the resources available, but Lots here... Of and you mm -hmm. can create all of your own resources on yeah. here as well. There are a lot of existing resources available mm -hmm. for you, um, but the random wheel, a bit like a yeah. roulette wheel, is a really nice one. That yeah. our colleague Sarah from Italy found. So for developing vocab and grammar, you can use it for questions, whatever you want really. You can put input everything into these random wheels. Mm -hmm. Use it. You could use it um, as a teacher to a whole class. Again, you can use it in little breakout rooms, give them mm -hmm. the control of the wheel. And this one is ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so if you Google word wall, FCE part one, first b2 first part one speaking questions you click start and there is a huge problem with probably about 40 45 questions on it yeah huge mm -hmm. wheel of different nice warm-up or warm down questions so they click a button it spins around and they get a question really nice easy way to structure it. you can leave it leave it with your students they'll like it because you know there's a bit of a sort of a slightly gamified ele yeah. element mm -hmm involved um, and get them using the criteria and marking each other. You can then drop into each breakout room as and when um, you feel necessary mm -hmm. and make sure they're aware of the can-do statements as well. Yeah. So for B2, what were we talking about for B2? 
Um, we were talking about clear, detailed text on a wide range of subjects. Yeah, interacting. Frame of viewpoint, interacting with a degree of fluency and spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Get them aware of them. Okay, and word wall is yeah, it's a great. I think there are other ones. There are other other um, other wheels. Yeah, already for other, available. Pegged yeah, for level. other levels, and also like depending on the grammar or the vocab point that you want to practice. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Um, B1, Victoria. Yeah. Um, in this case, for B1, we are going to, to see how students can show that they can produce connected text on topics which are familiar or of personal interest, describe experiences, dreams, hopes, and visions. Okay, this is very general, but how can be applied? How can it be applied? We can use that one of the of the tasks, in this case the long term for B1 preliminary. So this is part two. Mm -hmm. And this task type comes in at B1. Um, it then continues at B2, C1 with slightly different focus. What what do they need to do in this task, Victoria? Yeah, they, here they need to describe their photograph and yeah, uh, talk about as many aspects of it as possible. Yeah, they tend to have, um, it shows someone learning how to do something. It tends to give mm -hmm. them a, a little bit of structure there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is very similar to what was it, point three that we were talking about for more traditional ways of mm -hmm. assessing sort of yeah. individual long term. Mm -hmm. um, here's an example from our handbook. What do you think is going on there, Victoria? I think they are learning to cook, right? They are cooking maybe <laughs> a cake. A cake. Interesting. We have where they, you can watch. You can watch a. Uh, you can watch a speaking video of two Italian boys trying this. I think they say a cake. I think it's pasta. Don't you? Okay. okay. I was surprised by the Italian boys. It could be a cake. It could be pasta. I don't know. Yeah. We're making much. pasta. That's David's much. input. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, about that. Exactly, David. That's what I thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so all of these are available in our handbooks. And again, you can use any any images you, you want, really, and make them as interesting, as relevant as possible. Um, to your students. So as we said before, what's the criteria that comes in at B1, Victoria? Yeah, discourse management. So. Because it's uh, really when they, when students have the opportunity, right, to, to maybe organize their speech uh, more because they have a longer term. Exactly, and, and to produce enough language on their own so that we can really start thinking about this um, as, as a criteria. So at three, as we said, three is B1, produce responses which are extended beyond short phrases despite hesitation, contributions mostly relevant, but there may be some re repetition, basic cohesive devices. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by cohesive devices, Victoria? Yeah, connectors, um, linkers, but, and, however, Mm -hmm. Pronouns. Yeah, as well. Yeah, internal referencing, referring backwards, etc. Hmm. But we need to take into account that this is B1. So there exactly. will be also a progression when we move on to higher levels. Exactly. And so as we've given you in the handouts, which are the bottom right hand side, we've given you this. We try to rewrite this and pick out the most pertinent bits for a B1 learner. Mm -hmm. So you can give this to your students. And what do they focus on, Victoria? Um, here we are, uh, they are focusing on uh, the, the length of the phrases, if they are short, if they are a bit longer, if there are pauses, if their partner is describing the photo, if there is repetition, and also if they are using connectors, and we are giving them some examples, so it's easier for them. Exactly. And also give them more structure. Thank you, Donya. Giving them sort of scaffolding and support for mm -hmm. doing this. Give them strategies to deal with the picture. You know, who is in it? What are they doing? Why are they doing it? Uh, we've seen students talking about, you know, at the top of the picture, I can see this. On the right-hand side of the picture, I can see this. And they don't need to, I mean, if a minute feels like a long time when you're in yeah. exam, but mm -hmm. it does go pretty quickly. And if they have some support and some uh, some some structure to help them get through that, um, and just lots of practice, really. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here are two lovely autumnal scenes. <laughs> yes. <Victoria chose. laughs> um, so how, how, how would we use them, Victoria? 
Yeah, we can use them in class so we can get students in pairs and take turns to describe the photos. And as you said, I think it's quite important like this active listening. So when we are not assessing as such, when it's um, a classroom practice, we can we can encourage the, the listener, the person who is uh, listening to this description to um, have a more active attitude and maybe um, give them ideas, ask questions, if mm. we see that the, the person describing is running out of ideas. Exactly. I think peer assessment works really well. At this level, they have, they have the language, they have the listening skills um, to deal with a checklist like, like, like the one we, we, we showed before. Uh, definitely. So um, if, if you have the breakout room facility, you can do it very easily, as we said, in two pairs in breakout rooms. If you don't, we're going to have a look at a few options for recording mm -hmm. themselves, either recording just their voices and they can send those around and they can peer assess, or if your context allows with videos. So we'll take you through these quickly. The links to these are on the handouts that we'll uh, give you at the end. But voice spice is a really nice one. I think our colleague Donya looked at this in a previous session. But how does this work, Victoria? Yeah, well, you go to the website. It's really easy. You just uh, press record. And uh, then once you finished, you press stop, of course. Yeah, yeah obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can save it. They can, well, they can listen to one important thing. I yeah. think they, they can listen to what they've mm -hmm. done and decide whether to save it or not. So it gives them that bit of control. They can mm -hmm. have another attempt if they'd like to. Mm -hmm. So they can save that. And then? Then uh, you give it a title and you write your comment if you want to. And <laughs> then um, you can send it. So I you can share it online. I think yeah. you can either the, just send the link straight to your yeah. teacher. Or share it like with email or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they can add an image if they'd like to. Obviously, this all depends on the on the um on the limitations of your context and your students. And we are aware that there are uh, different different scenarios for, for, for different situations. Yeah. Um if video is an option, as we said before, we've heard from some some teachers about um, how they're using Flipgrid and their students are really enjoying it. Um, I had a go at this yesterday, so I went along. This is the sort of landing page. Yeah. Welcome to Flipgrid. You click on Start My Grid. And so I called it Speaking Practice Part 2. Um, you then have to set it up either using student IDs, which you're not allowed to do in the EU, I think, because of GDPR, or school emails. So the next stage, you um, you put in the the school domains. I think these only work with Gmail and Microsoft emails. I'm not entirely sure about that, but you can set up the domains that they're allowed to use. Um, and then there you are, my grid is ready. I get a little code, you see that little code, heritage1951, and then you send that code to your students. So I sent it to Victoria yesterday. <laughs> Here's my nice grid, I could put a nice, um, I should have put a nicer picture in, I apologize for that. Um, I sent this little code to Victoria yesterday and mm -hmm. she went in as a student and saw this. Um, so you logged in, Victoria? Yeah. Using my, my Google account. Mm -hmm. And then? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was on screen <laughs> and I could uh, record my, my video. And again, I could preview it as well to see if I was, I was happy with it. Okay. Um, so then got congratulations, Victoria. Yes, I could add, there was a lot to do. I could add selfies and I could I could do many things. But yeah, once I, I was satisfied with the results, I could um, save it. And, and then that was saved on my grid. Yeah. So I went in as a teacher and there you go. I had Victoria, zero <laughs> views, then I viewed it. And so I clicked on that, up pops the video of Victoria. I could um, leave a vibe. I don't really know what that means, sort of general feedback. And it gives me like grading rubric you have, um, ideas, performance, and then general comments. So nice, quick, structured, easy way for students to give you material. You can give quick, easy feedback on it. Um, and then once I'd said, excellent speaking task, Victoria, copy feedback link or email feedback. Click, click, she gets the feedback. 
very tidy, very quick. And as we said, yeah, I was speaking to a teacher the other day and she gives the instructions on Flipgrid. All of the students are waiting. They give their answers. It does, it does stilt and slow things down, but I think it's a nice, tidy, easy, colorful way to, to help deal with the situation um, that we're in at the moment. So please have a go with that. And lastly, on to A2, Victoria. Yeah. Um, so the can-do statements. Yep, students can communicate in simple and routine tasks, and they can describe, again, in simple terms, aspects of their immediate environment. We're going to have a look at the interactive task. Um, so there was there was a recently a revision for A2 and B1. Um, so from the beginning of this year, it's the first time we had a more familiar interactive task involved in A2. Previously, they had little um, they had little prompt cards and they had to create ask each other questions, which was a little unnatural and a little stilted. And if they couldn't create a question, they didn't do very well. However, this we feel is more natural. It, mm -hmm. it trialed very well. So mm -hmm. how does it work, Victoria, in the part two? Yeah, students um, have visual input and they need to express their, their opinions, um, talk about their experience. So it is uh, everything is very personal. OK, so it's not they don't need to speculate. They don't need to go into um, other levels um, language. It's just about them and the, the topics are very familiar to them in this so, case, hobbies do you like these different hobbies they speak to each other for two minutes about each of them do they like them yes or no and this is a2 okay so the criteria mm -hmm. is very much pegged at a2 this is a really nice way to structure this so if you give them the task you could give them a little grid like this playing video games exciting or noisy give them positive adjectives negative adjectives give them the language give them the support so that they can mm -hmm. carry out the task and again if they're trying to assess each other if you have them in two pairs they could have a they could just like tick cross tick cross a nice checklist about how their partners or their classmates are doing mm -hmm. Um, so we wrote down the interactive communication and made this as simple as possible. This again is on your handouts. There's the official criteria and our criteria. Yeah. So quite simple. Do do they ask each other questions? Yeah, the questions could be very questions? very basic. You no, know, like do you agree or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. The questions, they're not really, they're not really um, expected to be answer, asking and answering questions to do well at A2, but it's a really nice way to sort of encourage them. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Victoria, you're going to have to take over for a minute or two. Something's gone mad with my computer. Okay. So, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like um, we, we've we tried to make it as simple as possible uh, because we were aware that they are A2 candidates. Okay, so just trying to point them in the in the direction of what they, they need to do in the during the task. So also um, checking for, for help if they need help uh, and also if they can show whether they agree or disagree with their partner. Again, at a very basic level, because we know that this is A2. Lovely. I'm back. I don't know what happened. Sorry. Right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so lastly, we I know we've gone very quickly. We only had an hour. But we've mm -hmm. tried to have, have a look at a few different levels and given you the criteria. I think the most important thing we'd like you to take away from today is using clear um, using clear structured criteria. Should we come back on screen, Victoria? Sorry. OK. So we had to disappear, so our slides weren't quite quite organized properly. Um, <laughs> use the criteria and make your students aware of the criteria. We've given you a couple of examples for one criterion for each level, but have a look at it. Think about how you can write those down and make them understandable and relevant and usable for your students in the activities and in the classroom. Um, so once you have set up your activities and you've got them involved in the peer assessment, we have to decide on how to give the feedback. So, Victoria. Yeah, two options here, individual feedback, group feedback. And um, how can we do that? Or what are we, when, when we are giving individual feedback, we should use the, the criteria with examples. We've seen 
okay, that uh, using the criteria is going to help us uh, be more objective and it's easier to assess when we when we have something specific to refer to. And we should be looking at strengths and aspects to improve. Sometimes we may pay more attention to things to improve, but we also need to keep our comments motivating and encouraging. And when it comes to group feedback, we can, we should try to make peer assessment a routine and allow time for it during our class. And maybe it's easier in this case to concentrate a bit more on aspects to improve because everything is or should be anonymous. Okay, so students uh, shouldn't identify with what you are saying. It should be in general. Exactly, that is on purpose. We have written those two the other way around on purpose because as Victoria said I think a lot of the time we focus a bit too much on on the negatives mm. uh, so I think individually a bigger bigger focus on the positives and perhaps in group feedback you can anonymize things a little bit more um, and focus on things that everybody needs to improve quite mm. nicely um, a few uh, Examples. A few so. examples have come up. Well, a few links to speaking tests. Um, we have lots of speaking tests available on our YouTube channel at different levels, which is a really nice way to show the students what's going to be expected of them, what will happen in the exam. And for you and them, um, you also get examiner's comments. Mm -hmm. And what is important about these, Victoria? That they are quoting the assessment criteria and then they are uh, showing these with actual examples uh, from the candidate's performance. Exactly. So Florine initiates and responds appropriately. She links her contributions and then examples. So again, we're using the criteria, giving an example, using the criteria, giving an example. And hopefully that will help the students become more familiar with the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are using recordings, you can do this. If you have the time, just put in the time. Give an example, this is where it happened. Give an example, this is where it happened. Mm -hmm. And so here is the feedback on Florine and Maria. It's a very nice B2 first, which I think is available mm -hmm. at the top. There are lots of different ones available. And looking at the examiner's comments, using the examiner's comments, and showing your students the videos, I think can be quite encouraging, as long as they're not very, 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 very strong ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so giving the feedback, Victoria, we talked about individual and group mm. feedback. Yes, we can try to use one-to-one -one spoken feedback if time allows. We know that this is a, a challenge. There are also platform appropriate options. So depending on the, the platform you are using, you can go for one or the other. We, we've seen how Flipgrid can be, can be mm. great, but also breakout rooms in Zoom. And you can also uh, send an email with the with the model that we have just seen with Florin and, and Maria. So just giving examples and quoting the criteria. When it comes exactly. to group feedback, anonymous examples, we can share screen, we can use Padlet uh, for that. And then as part of the homework, students can try and improve their, their performance following your suggestions. And George, giving general guidelines about common areas to, to improve? Exactly. As we said before, I think focusing on the, the less strong aspects, we can do this sort of more generally. Either micro, so you could take anonymous examples of what has happened, say what was wrong with this, or macro, bigger areas that we all really need to improve our discourse management. We need to think about how we order our ideas when we're speaking on our own, or how do we improve our interaction. Um, sort of back and forth asking questions. What do you think? Yes, I agree. Oh, I'm not sure about this. Giving them chunks of language. Mm -hmm. HW is homework. Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we would like you afterwards to please take part in this survey. Um, there's the link there, and I think it will be sent out to you in an email afterwards. And um, if you could sign up at this link for further testing and research with us, that would be lovely because the more feedback we get from you, the more we can shape what we do and make sure that it's relevant for all of you as teachers. So for the last five, couple of minutes, do you have any questions that we haven't managed to cover? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry it's been so quick. It's a shame we can't have you for longer. <laughs> we know that you all have very busy uh, schedules as well. 
Um, yes, Elena, the one on the 28th is a, is, is, is a repeat of this for people in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But then we have um, writing coming up. We'll look at those in a second. And Victoria and I will be trying to deal with reading and listening after that. <laughs> um, I'll give you access now to the useful links handout as well. I think it's already sharing, actually. There you go. So you have documents on the right hand side to download. Any further questions that we haven't managed to deal with? Monitoring students in breakout rooms. Uh, you're never going to be able to monitor everybody all the time. Uh, we know that. I think giving them giving them some structure and 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 involving or trying to integrate peer assessment into the class. If they're keeping checklists of their partners, you can have some visibility of that. Um, any other questions, Victoria? Not that I can see. Thank you. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you very much. Well, well, I think the parameters, Shaikh, I think have a look at the criteria that we've yeah. given you. And there's the overall criteria we looked at, which is a lot. But you can download um, the teacher's handbooks and you get criteria appropriate to level. And I think breaking it down and looking at the different criteria can help a lot. Because as we said, you know, we all have those students who speak absolutely perfect English, but don't really say very much. <laughs> uh, they're not very good at interacting. And at the other end of the scale, you have those wonderful communicators, very interactive, whose grammar and vocab is never perfect. But I think it's important to, to bear all the criteria in mind. And when we look at the criteria, they are evenly marked. Okay, They're evenly weighted because we think that together they all make up the skill of speaking. Mm. So. Yeah, I think, George, there was a question about how um, we can motivate our students. And I think um, we can try and, and include topics that they, they find interesting. Um, so there are there are some tools um, and um, resources that help you with, with that, like Mentimeter, for example. Yeah. Um, and students Kahoot. Can, Kahoot. Yeah, Kahoot, um, can contribute with topics and also find um, material that they can relate to, that they can um, personalize with their own experience and also giving them the opportunity to take part more actively with self-assessment, peer assessment, so. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, here are the dates for the next webinars, and they're all available on the on the on the webinar website. So please sign up for those, and we'll just have a quick look through some more support materials. Um, Annie, numerical grades. I think if you look at the way our criteria are developed or that that they are scored, you can if you're adding them, if you're um, weighting them evenly. Um, how many have four or five criteria? A mark out of 25 then you can scale that up and down as as you want here's the link to the cfr if david didn't give it to you earlier um it makes for very interesting Indeed. reading and, it and we do have a webinar on applying the cfr to your curriculum making sure that your curriculum is that cfr is integrated and i think can do statements are one of the easiest ways to do that um because you're by the end of this year you will be able to blah 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 mm -hmm. blah and it breaks it all down very nicely into topic areas, into skills. Um, please go to our website, um, Supporting Every Teacher. Um, this has been online for, what, th th uh, three months now? Yeah. Two and a half months? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and lots of resources. Yeah, in the current situation, very useful. And also please check out our support pack because there you can find uh, lesson plans, exam material, some tips and ideas um, to um, teach and learn English from home. Supporting every teacher, this is also our, our, um, from Cambridge University Press. Um, lots of more advice, tools and resources, and they've been running webinars as well. I think um, somebody keeps asking about culturally biased material. We try as far as possible to make sure that 
all of our material is as globally accessible as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are in a very localized situation, then you can make things more relevant to your students. Um, in our exams, we do, as I said, as far as possible, try to make sure the material doesn't require background knowledge, is not culturally biased. Um, but if you're teaching in a very localized environment, it will make it more relevant and uh, more immediate to them, then you can decide on that. Further exam preparation support, Victoria? Yeah, uh, practice makes perfect with lesson plans and also tips that you can share. Uh, world of fun resources for young learners. There is a lot there. Please check it out. And also the exam boosters for A2 key, B1 preliminary, B2 first and C1 advanced that are available for free to download. Lovely. Well, we've finished very slightly late. We apologize, but thank you all very much for coming. Um, it's lovely to 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 speak to so many of you at once. I'm sorry if we couldn't answer all of your questions, but um, hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks for reading and listening. Um, and our colleagues from South America will be running writing next week, which will be very interesting mm -hmm. as well. So thank you all very much. Thank you very um, much. Have a lovely, what day is it today, Victoria? Is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> lovely rest of the week. <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks.